Robin was duly informed that Ram's Bonner host surrounded Lanka like a tumultuous sea. In an angry mood, he went up the tower of his mansion and surveyed the scene. On every side, he saw Vana warriors who had armed themselves with trees and boulders. He wondered how he could destroy this vast invading force. At the same time, Ram saw the city of Lanka guarded by the Rakshasas. He could see with his mind's eye the sad figure of Sita, held captive within those walls. He ordered an immediate assault, shouting victory to the Vanar king, victory to Ram and Lakshman, perish, O Rakshasas! The Vanar army rushed on the doomed city. Some hurled big boulders against the fortress wall and on the city gates. Others, armed with huge trees torn up by the roots, rushed on the Rakshasas. Then Robin sent forth a big army. He commanded it to go out and slay at once all the Bunners. They beat their drums and blew their trumpets till the sky resounded. Then they rushed upon the Bunners. The Bunners used boulders and trees and their own nails and fists to oppose the Rakshasas. Thousands fell dead on either side. The field was covered with blood and mangled bodies. Besides this gruesome engagement, there were many duels between individual warriors. Angad encountered Indrajit. There was a duel between the Rakshasa Prajanga and Sampati, one of the companions of Abishan. Hanuman fought with Jambumali, Neil with Nikumba, Lakshman with Virupaksha, and so on. The chariot and horses of Indrajit were destroyed, and Angad received a blow from the mace of Indrajit. Jambumali hit Hanuman with his weapon and Hanuman smashed his chariot to pieces. The Rakshasas concentrated their attack on Ram and dropped by the thousands under his arrows. Vidyun Mali aimed his darts at Sushain. The latter smashed with a rock the chariot of the Rakshasa. Vidyun Mali jumped out with his mace and attacked Sushain who crushed him to death with a rock. In this way, many warriors fought and many died. The battle raged throughout the day, and at night, the Rakshasas would not stop fighting. The battle became fierce. Blood flowed in streams. There was terrible slaughter on both sides. Angad attacked Indrajit, killed his horses and charioteer, and smashed the chariot. The Bunners admired the skill and strength of their prince and raised shouts of joy. All the warriors in the army praised the Bunner prince's prowess. Indrajit lost his temper along with his chariot and resorted to sorcery. Making himself invisible, he aimed many darts at Ram and Lakshman, who were greatly harassed by this attack from a foe whose whereabouts no one could discover and who seemed to shower deadly missiles from all sides. Then Indrajit shot serpent darts at Ram and Lakshman. Bound by them, the brothers could not move and lay helpless on the battlefield. They looked at one another, wondering what to do. Lakshman's grief at Ram's plight was great. As for the Bunners, they stood round in mournful bewilderment. Indrajit congratulated the Rakshasa army and returned to the city. Exulting in his victory, he went to his father and announced that the story of Ram and Lakshman was over. Robin was beside himself with joy. He embraced his son and praised his prowess. The Vana warriors, wounded and downcast, seeing Ram and Lakshman laid low, concluded that all was over.
The Bichon, who saw Sugrive standing helpless and forlorn, put courage in the Bonner King. He said, It is foolish to lose hope. Look at Ram and Lakshman. Their faces are still bright. They are not dead. So do not be afraid. Soon they will recover from this and resume fighting. The chief took heart and did everything to save the army from panic. The ranks were reformed with their respective chiefs. Meanwhile, Robin had it proclaimed in Lanka that Ram and Lakshman had been slain by Indrajit. He sent for his women and said to them, Go at once and inform Sita that Ram is no more, that the two princes lie dead on the battlefield and the Vanner army is destroyed. Also, to convince her finally, take her in the airplane and show her the battlefield from above. Let the obstinate one see for herself what has happened, seeing that she has no one to look to besides <laughs> myself. She will now turn to me. The ladies did as they were told. From the airplane, Sita saw the field of battle. She saw Ram and Lakshman lying motionless on the ground with their weapons scattered by their sides. She was filled with grief. She thought that it was now all over and cried, to this end has fate brought me, belying the predictions of saints and astrologers that I would live as a happy wife and mother and a glorious queen. Oh, poor Kausalya, Ram's mother, who shall console you now? Like one who, having crossed the ocean, gets drowned in a little pond. These warriors, who had done so much, lie dead now. Oh, princes! How did your divine weapons fail you? Alas, all powerful is destiny. <laughs> when Sita was thus in the desperation of utter sorrow, Drijita, her Rakshasi companion, who was looking closely at the motionless figures of the prince, suddenly burst out, Dear Sita, there is no cause for grief. Neither your husband nor Lakshman is dead. Look at their faces. Look, look, just take a look. Is this how the dead look? They are bound by a charmed weapon and are unconscious for a while. Look at the orderly array of the army. Have courage. Do not be frightened. Her words fell like nectar in Sita's ears. Then the airplane returned to Lanka and Sita was taken back to the Ashok Park. In time, the force of the arrows, charged with sorcery, weakened. Ram opened his eyes and sat up. He looked at his brother lying on the ground and cried out, Alas, what is the use of victory now for me? My dear brother, why did I bring you with me to the forest and get you killed like this? How can I return without you to Iodia? You always consoled me in my sorrow, yet, yet you are silent now when I face the greatest sorrow. How can I survive you? Where in the world is a warrior like you? One can replace anything lost, but where can I find anyone to fill your place? Like Kartavirya Arjun, with his thousand hands, you, with your two hands, discharged showers of arrows and killed the Rakshasas. How could death come to you? You came with me into the forest, and now I shall repay my debt to you by joining you in the abode of death. Ah, oh, I confess defeat. The word I gave to Vibishan cannot be fulfilled. Oh, Honor King, return to Kishkinda with all your warriors. You have worked hard for me. You have fulfilled all the duties of friendship. You have my gratitude. But there is no use in more of you dying. Go back to your city. 
Let me perish here. Thus did Ram lament in helpless grief. Then the Bishan arrived there, holding his mace. Seeing his huge dark form, the Bunners imagined it to be Indrajit again, and started to retreat. In another part of the battlefield, Sugriv and Angad were watching this. Sugriv said, Why are the Bunners thus beginning to scatter in fear? What has happened? Angad answered, Do you not know that Ram and Lakshman are lying wounded? Sugriv replied, It is not that. Look at the way they are running helter-skelter. There must be some other reason for it. Then he learned that the Bunners, who had suffered at the hands of Indrajit, mistook the Bishan for him and were frightened. He sent Jambavan to rally the troops by disabusing them of this fear. The Bishan looked at Ram and Lakshman. When he saw them wounded, covered with arrows all over and unable to fight, he broke down crying. It is all over. What more is there to do? Sugriv turned to Sushain, his uncle, and said, Take Ram and Lakshman to Kishkinda. I shall kill Ravan, redeem Sita, and bring her here. Sushain answered, there are herbs which can heal the wounds of the princes and restore them to health. Some of us know where these herbs are to be found. Here, here, Hanuman, come here, come here. Now, if you send him, he will fetch the herbs. As they were speaking, the sea and air were churned up by a mighty wind, and Garud, the great eagle carrier of Lord Vishnu, burst into view. When Garud arrived, the serpent darts that covered Ram and Lakshman disappeared instantaneously. They were all venomous serpents which had become arrows through the magic of Indrajit and had bound the prince's bodies. But when their constant and dreaded enemy Garud appeared, they took flight. Then Garud gently stroked the bodies of Ram and Lakshman and restored them to their full strength. The wounds were all healed, and they rose up, stronger and more radiant than before. <laughs>